So hi, hello everyone again. Hello, Micro Punter here. Welcome again to uh, another Saturday live stream. And uh, today I prepared a few mounting media here. Yeah, some of them you already know. Um, one of them I did not uh, use yet here in one of the live streams. It's UKIT. Yeah, and I would like to do the following. I'd like to make a couple of permanent mounts. I'm also including a, a permanent mount of pollen that I have collected some time ago here. So it's pollen. And I would like uh, to see how the mounting media actually perform. So maybe next week when I uh, can uh, look at the, the slides again, let's see how, how well they are actually performing. Well, um, ah, okay. So missing sound for the first few seconds, but now it's okay. Well, good. Um, yeah, I hope that the sound works. Yeah, so I think it seems to be working again. I do have a new microphone here, um, in case you're kind of wondering. Um, I bought myself a slightly smaller one because the other one was a little bit too large. But a few organizational things first. Um, the, um, we're right now where I am, right now in Central Europe. Uh, the weather is pretty bad. It's uh, not snowing, it's raining and uh, there is a storm. And uh, today and also yesterday, there was a short power shortage, uh, power outage. So um, they, we didn't have electricity for one second. So all of the internet and the computer and everything was shut down. So if this uh, happens again today, if the live stream is interrupted, then this might be because I've uh, quickly lost a little bit of electricity. Um, yeah, so in this case, please bear with me. I'll try to go online again, but it may, might take, uh, might take a, a, few, um, a few minutes. Yeah, so I see that uh, some of you, many of you have already started to um, yeah, go into the chat uh, forum. Yeah, so if you have, uh, many of you already know the, uh, the rules of the game. If you have any questions that you would like to directly address to me, please put an at Oliver or at Micropunter in front so that I'm able to skip uh, over um, all of the comments to go directly to those comments that uh, basically are for me. Well, um, let me quickly check how many people have tuned in. Um, sometimes I can actually see how many people have tuned in. Um, yeah, there are 25 people watching right now. That's, that's nice, okay? So um, what I'll um, do is uh, the following is, is I'll get started uh, right now. Um, and um, I've, again, look what I've got here. This is my, yeah, um, my uh, slide ringing table because today I'd like to also try something that I did not try before either. I would like to make a permanent mount uh, of the pollen um, using uh, glycerin. And uh, so this is a permanent mount which uh, where the mounting medium does not turn solid. So that's something that uh, is a little bit uh, new as well. Let me put it away here. Um, but what I would like to do now is, is I'm simply going to start to make a few slides. I'm going to look at them under the microscope and then we're going to um, have a look again next week. Uh, so to, um, yeah, to see how this actually um, worked out. But before I do that, um, I do want to show you this uh, over here. I mounted this a few weeks ago. This is the leg, um, leg of a fly. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and there is something that I really would like to, to clarify here because maybe you do notice something here. So that's the leg of a fly, nothing unusual so far, but there's one thing that you're going to notice here that I would like to address. That's a, yeah. Um, so that's the leg of the fly and you've already seen it. Let me see where the arrow is. Here is the arrow. Look at this, this part over here is much darker than this one over here. So why is that? There seems to be some kind of an interesting yeah, separation here. And the reason is, is, is that this part here on top, which is so much darker, there is air inside the leg of the fly. And uh, over here where it's much brighter, this is the part where there is actually mounting medium was able to enter the, uh, the leg of the fly and uh, it looks much better. Um, so this is basically is an, uh, an almost like an internal air bubble. And this already shows one important uh, yeah, thing that we have to take care. We have to actually to be very strict about this. If you want to make uh, slides that last very long and that also look good, you really have to make sure that uh, the mounting medium is able to reach all parts of the specimen. Yeah? And uh, normally what you would probably do, but I do not have that uh, available, is, is you can actually remove the air or you can try to remove the air by putting the slide into a vacuum chamber. And this uh, will very often pull the air out uh, and uh, yeah, it would, uh, um, it's kind of degassing the specimen. I'm not able to do that. I do not have a vacuum chamber. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically the, the, the thing here. Um, but I just wanted to make you aware of this, that sometimes it is actually um, worth uh, maybe placing the specimen a little bit into a solvent first before you're mounting it. 
depends very much on the specimen, but I just wanted to make this aware for you, okay? Um, yeah, how long will uh, last glycerin? So that is the thing. Glycerin itself, or glycerol as it's called, is, um, is a substance that looks very oily, but is actually water soluble, but not only that. So I got a little bit of glycerin in here. I bought this at a local drugstore, um, a, a bottle, and it just poured some in here. And this glycerin, or glycerol is very hygroscopic. This means it likes to attract air moisture quite a bit. Um, so if you put a specimen into glycerol, what's going to happen is that this specimen is going to lose water very quickly and therefore um, the glycerol preserves the specimen quite well. However, because it does not solidify, it does not turn solid, uh, for this reason of course we have a problem that um, um, essentially, um, yeah, it remains liquid and uh, this can be of course a problem. And another thing that we have to be careful is, is that uh, even though the glycerol does uh, dehydrate uh, quite, uh, quite a bit, and by removing the water. Um, of course, there, you cannot exclude the possibility that not some fungi are also going to start growing. So you still, um, yeah, so for example, you've heard of the mounting medium glycerol jelly or glycerin gelatin. Um, this contains a lot of glycerol and also uh, gelatin. And they, you have to add a little bit of a disinfectant to that mounting medium um, in order to prevent it from turning bad. So to answer your question, um, how long will it la uh, the glycerin last? Um, and I would say it depends a little bit on, on how you, well you make the specimen, but indeed it is uh, correct uh, to assume that it might not be quite as stable, okay? Um, I've heard of glycerin being a mounting medium, but how can it be almost never solid? Well, what I would say is the following is, is um, yeah, the glycerol gelatin turns solid, but pure glycerol, um, as I have here, is, uh, will remain liquid, okay? Uh, doesn't glycerol raise the refractive index of the mounting media so you'll get brighter and higher resolution images? Um, generally, that is correct. Glycerol has um, a certain refractive index, just like all mounting media have, and sometimes you can adjust the refractive index um, of the mounting medium by changing the ratio um, of water to the glycerol. Okay, so there is plenty of experimentation that you can do. Okay, um, but what I would like to do first is I would like to simply mount, um, yeah, three specimens, and I just wanted to show them to you. And there's a reason why I've selected those. Well, maybe a fourth one as well. There's a tiny little fly in here somewhere, which I caught. Maybe you can see this tiny dot. I'm going to mount this in Uperol, you know, just for the fun of it. And um, it's an alcohol right now. So what are the specimens? The specimens are, um, I've got some bird's feathers here, uh, which are basically uh, hydrophobic. Uh, so they're a little bit oily. So water-based mounting media are not the best here. I do have some pollen. I think, um, if I remember correctly, it's a spruce pollen a few years ago. Um, yeah, there were lots of pollen uh, around and I collected uh, this sample here. And last but not least, look, uh, that's the seed coat of a peanut, yeah? Uh, the seed coat, this paper-like seed coat, this um, is also quite interesting because um, certain mounting media will actually make it more transparent than others, okay? And I would like to um, experiment a little bit with that, yeah? So that's basically it. Um, and the, for the glycerol, what, I'm going, what I've prepared is, is I've prepared some of those slides here um, using my slide ringing table. So these are basically spacers. And yeah, I'll, I'll show you how this uh, will be used, uh, how I'll use this later on, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna just start making uh, some of the slides here and I just realized I'm again perfectly prepared because I do not have a pen here um, to label my slides. <laughs> That's a little bit of a pity. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll get started in any case. I'm, I'm going to uh, kind of work myself through with uh, Elmer's PVA. This is a Upro mounting medium, which is uh, quite, which I like quite a lot. Uh, very good for mounting in insects and arthropods. Clear nail polish. It's nitrocellulose. It's very cheap, readily available, but does shrink quite a bit. And then this here is yeah, U kit. Uh, that's that's. Uh, um, yeah, um, a, an advanced one, okay? Um, the solvent um, you should not inhale, so I'm not using this one very often, you kid, okay? So I'm gonna get somehow started, um, yeah, and I'm going to just start off uh, with, I don't know, um, I'm just gonna start off with the seed coat over here. And the seed coat, uh, yeah, um, of, of a peanut, and I think I'm going to just remove everything else uh, for right now, and I'm just going to work my way through here. Usually what I do is, is I will add a little uh, drop Let's put everything away here as well. So the idea is, uh, today is a little bit is to show that different specimens uh, yeah, work best with uh, different mounting media. Okay, so it's kind of difficult to open. So Elmer's PVA glue, um, yeah, you probably already know it. I've used it before. I diluted it with a little bit of water. 
Every mounting medium has its own advantages and disadvantages. This one has a little bit of disadvantage that it likes to make bubbles, um, which can, yeah, which you have to remove. That's why I've got some toothpicks here. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. So that's basically it. So uh, a small piece of the the seat coat goes into, yeah, the mounting medium, and usually or very often it, it's uh, floating on the surface. You know what? Maybe I can actually lower the camera a little bit here, so that you see this better. And it does have autofocus. So let's see. Yes, here we go. Ah, okay. Now, now it's tipping over. It's too heavy. So let's do it like this. Okay, maybe that's better. Let's refocus. Yes, here we go. So um, yeah, if it's uh, floating on the surface, you somehow have to make sure that it's properly submerged. Remember, we want to make sure that the mounting medium reaches all parts. And uh, today, look what I got here. I'm not going to use my square um, cover glasses, but I'm going to use round ones. I got myself some round cover glasses. Why round ones? Because they kind of look nice. Okay. Yeah. So here they are. Yeah. They're a little bit more expensive, but look, ah, they're dirty. I don't know why they're never able to produce cover glasses that are can be used directly out of the box. Yeah. Why always is there some kind of a some grime smear or some I don't know on it? I don't understand. Yeah. So I usually dry wipe it using my microfiber cloth. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, basically that's it. Um, and you can either use your fingers, of course, or I don't know. Yeah, up here. Here we go. Let capillary action do the rest. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is water-based, and I can already tell you that the result is uh, probably not quite as as good as uh, using uh, some of the more hydrophobic mounting media. Okay, so let's uh, wait a second or so for the for the glue to uh, kind of uh, soak in a little bit, and I'm going to use this here. Um, yeah. Um, some some comments here. As a kid, I've had uh, glycerin with the brine shrimp kit to slow them down. Does that also work on normal pond uh, water slide? Ah, that's a good one. Be careful. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, so the idea is, is if you add glycerin because it's very viscous uh, to water, then it will slow down water microorganisms. But be careful uh, if you use too much glycerin because it uh, changes the osmotic balance. So it can actually cause a certain dehydration of, of the specimen. So you can try that. Um, it will slow them down because it increases the viscosity. But um, the, the problem is, is the side effect that, yeah, the osmotic balance. Yeah, so that is a little bit uh, one of the issues. But again, it depends quite a bit on the, on the specimens that you want to observe. Yeah? So maybe, with, uh, maybe some of them are less sensitive than others. Yeah? So let's go here. Yeah, so that was again the, the, the fly leg. I'm just going to take this out as it is. And uh, let's put in this one over here. And yeah, this is how it looks like, as expected. Yeah. yeah look, it's pretty dark. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, what you can try to do as well, if you use vegetable oil, for example, or immersion oil, surprise, surprise, it's going to be much brighter. Okay. Yeah, so um, this depends quite a bit on how well the mounting medium is able to reach all of the parts. Okay, but let's go up here. But let's uh, we're going to look at this again, of course, next week. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to really go up with the light intensity here. Yeah. But the idea here is really to kind of show you a little bit the, uh, yeah, the difference. Then, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put them then maybe side by side. Let Let's remove the arrow here. I don't like the arrow, okay? Yeah, so this is kind of the, the, the first thing and I'll just keep on now using the different uh, mounting media here. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm going to maybe go do this a little bit faster because otherwise, yeah, it's gonna take a, a little bit too much time. So this was now the, the Elmer's PVA. I better not forget about the, the sequence. <laughs> yeah. So this one over here, I'm going to now use Uproll mounting medium. Okay, that, that is uh, the one that um, actually is very commonly used for insects and arthropods because it has a clearing in action. It smells pretty good. <laughs> you shouldn't smell it nevertheless, but uh, clearing action means that the specimens will start, uh, uh, the insects and so on will start to appear brighter um, after some time, okay? So let's uh, again um, take a little bit of the seed coat here. The seed coat is uh, a little too large. 
And uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, a little, so we move this one over here. So again, let's try to push it in to make sure that it's uh, properly submerged. And uh, yeah, let's, I have to put this one somewhere where it doesn't get too messy. Again, a cover glass. Yeah, I have to wipe it again. Yeah, <laughs> I just saw you, you expired 10 years ago. That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I know, I know. It expired a long time ago and it still works perfectly. I've never even diluted it or um, did anything to it. And I'm, I'm still very satisfied. Yeah? yeah, so this is actually not the original bottle. Um, I had an original one and I added, I added this uh, text myself. Yeah? So I still have uh, basically the original bottle. Yeah? Yeah, so basically 2013, yeah, expiry date. And I fill it in back in the year 2009 yeah? from, the, from the other bottle. Yeah? So, let's, uh, so this one over here is, is the Uprol mounting medium. Yeah? And let's have a look how this looks like. So, and uh, probably not so much different. Yeah. And uh, we're going to wait until next week um, and we're going to see how yeah, this will then look like. But sometimes maybe we can actually see some cells here as well. Yeah. So, and that's a little bit the idea is, is to have a look how the mounting medium and the specimen when they interact with each other, uh, how this then changes uh, the things that you're able to see. So I'm going to yeah I have to put this I'm going to put it away, and I'm going to now do the third one. The third one is nail polish. Okay, just clear nail polish. Ah, I need to change over to the desk view again. So you might be a little bit surprised about nail polish, um, why it can be used, and indeed um, yeah it's nitrocellulose, and um, yeah. And if the specimen is completely dry, it's absolutely not a problem. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that the mounting media have to be compatible with the specimen. So if the specimen is moist and contains water, then certain mounting media are not suitable. Yeah. So let's make this here. And I think more, okay, where is this? Let's put this one in carefully. The problem with, uh, with uh, nail polish is, is, is that um, it likes to shrink uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so when the solvent uh, evaporates, yeah, it, uh, yeah, there is some shrinkage. So we're going to see uh, how this actually then also looks next week. Ah, the question now, there's a question here. Uh, why does glycerin stay liquid? Shouldn't it evaporate? No, it doesn't evaporate. Uh, glycerin is... Uh, uh, basically not water, it does contain water. And if you actually leave glycerin out, it will not evaporate, it will actually start to absorb more water. So, you know, I see maybe I could have used a little bit more of the, uh, the nail polish, but let's have a look at this one now. So, yeah, they look all very similar, okay? But uh, it might look, they might look different after the yeah, the mounting medium has completely uh, been taken up. Yeah. But you see over here, yeah, it's already a little bit brighter. As a matter of fact, if you use, you can try this uh, as, uh, as well, try to use immersion oil um, or um, uh, just vegetable oil um, as a mounting medium for this, yeah? And you're going to see it looks significantly brighter. Yeah. So let's leave this here, also on the side. And uh, next one would be, so let's see, that's uh, Elmer's PVA. Then I had this here, then I had nail polish. Maybe I should have, yeah. And uh, I'm going to now t uh, take a U-Kit. And this is the one that uh, basically you should always keep uh, well uh, ventilated because it does contain uh, solvents that are not quite as, as healthy, okay? Now I do not have a dropper here. So what I have to do is, is I have to use I have to use uh, yeah, some of my yeah, toothpicks here to take some of the sample out and place it directly on the slide. Uh, 
the UPRL will take several weeks uh, to, to dry. Um, UKIT, this one over here, is significantly faster. So I need to place this somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll just place it here maybe so that I can use it later again. Let's close this. And uh, again, so ah, yeah, fell directly into it. So, and then let's see how this works. Again, a cover glass. Just thinking about this, I could have actually, yeah, probably placed several specimens on the same slide. So here we go. Yeah, do that capillary action, do everything else. And let's have a look at this one here. And the scope. Yeah. Again, some bubbles. Yeah. So far, nothing unusual and not no, no big differences. Okay, but we're gonna see. Yeah. But here, uh, where the yeah, where it's thinner, we can actually see that it actually started to soak in much better and this uh, brightened it up. Yeah. So I can imagine that maybe after a couple of minutes or so, yeah, um, also the central part will become brighter. But I cannot turn up the light in any case. So um, let me see if I forgot. There are several questions here. Um, why does the glycerin stay liquid? Okay, after your session from last week, I did a test with digital micrometer and also noticed that the thickness of cover glasses does indeed vary quite a bit. Yes. Ah, okay. Very, very good. Um, so in other words, those cover glasses that you have here, I think that's an interesting uh, point. Those cover glasses, um, yeah, basically do not all have the same thickness. Yeah. Um, I read somewhere that um, is, you can buy cover glasses which are very, very consistent in thickness, but they're significantly more expensive because uh, the correct thickness is important for the best uh, resolution, at, especially if, the, um, if you're looking um, at uh, with a high magnification. And the thickness, a small change in thickness can indeed uh, make, uh, make some change, be quite different. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just saw that Europol expired 10 years ago. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay, and there is a comment here, I mount mosquito larvae on slides to show my student colleagues and we learn together. Do you think I should use glycerin for permanent mounting nail or nail polish? Honestly, um, um, hmm. you see glycerol is, is not a very good permanent mount, right? Because it stays liquid. Yeah? Um, nail polish has the disadvantage that it starts to shrink a lot. Yeah? So my suggestion is if you want to mount mosquitoes and mosquito larvae, well, there is definitely the standard is Upril for entomolo entomology. Entomology is the study of insects. Upril is the choice uh, for, for, for small insects and arthropods and, and, and spider and, 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 and insect legs and so on. Yeah? That is um, because it, it, clears, um, it clears the specimen. Yeah. Um, it makes it more transparent. Yeah. So this is basically the last one and the last one that was a U-Kit. So I'm going to also put this away and now I'm going to try this again um, using um, yeah, the bird feather. So here we're, um, the point of this was now to investigate a little bit is uh, if uh, over the course of a week, if there are some of the mounting mediums start to clear up the, the, the seed coat of the, of, the, um, of the peanut. And right now with the, the feather, I want to actually check a little bit um, if certain mounting media cause the, uh, this, uh, the individual uh, parts of the feather, the barbules as they're called, to stick together or not. Yeah? Because I can tell you right away, if you um, try to mount this in water or in a water-based mounting medium, then they might stick together more than if uh, they are mounted in a more hydrophobic mounting medium. That's a little bit the experiment that I would like to do here. Okay, so that's the thing. So yeah, I'm going to continue doing that. So I will arrange everything here as it's supposed to be and I'll simply label it later. And I'm going to now remove uh, the seed coat for the peanuts and I'm going to start again all over again with, <laughs> with Elmer's uh, PVA. And this time I'm going to have a look at the feather. And what I'm going to do is I would like to yeah, take a part of the, yeah, the front part here. Not, not this one over here, but this one in the front. So Elmer's PVA again. 
let's move it up. It's, so that's the water-based mounting medium. So let's uh, remove again a little bit this air bubble. Here we go. So let's, this is not a little more difficult. It's a little bit of a question of luck. Yeah, so, and again, let's try to submerge it properly. So, and of course, a cover glass goes on top. So, so far, no power shortage. For those of you who just joined in <laughs> yesterday, um, I was doing a, a video conference with a few of my students and all of a sudden everything shut off. <laughs> so this here is uh, now the feather. Let's have a look at the feather, okay? Um, in a water-based mounting medium. And uh, here we go. Ah, oh, it's way too bright. Okay, way too bright. Okay, but I think I can already show you that what I wanted to, you can already see that what I wanted to show you. Okay. Let me close this a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So that is uh, essentially something that we uh, can see quite frequently when you're using a hydrophobic, um, a hydrophobic specimen. Like for example, the bird feathers are covered in oil, and when you put it into a mounting medium that uh, is uh, water-based, yeah? because what you're able to see uh, is is that there is air, air bubble over here, right? Yeah. So the um, the water-based mounting medium has a problem reaching all of the parts, yeah, because uh, yeah, the, the the feathers they do not want to t touch the water-based mounting medium, yeah? and for this reason, very often, if you want to you, uh, look at bird feathers, uh, don't put them into water, but put them into um, into oil. Yeah? Okay, here it's a little bit better already again. Yeah. Yeah. But again, here we've got some, some air bubbles. So let's see if, if different mounting media are a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the bird's feather. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to now go back over to the desk. And uh, the next one was uh, Uproil. Okay. This one is uh, slightly more hydrophobic. So it should be better compatible with the hydrophobic feather. So let's see. Yeah, and it yeah it already sank down on its own. Yeah. Yeah, it's already now basically submerged, even though I did not push it into the droplet. Yeah. This is a sign that uh, the yeah the specimen and the mounting medium are a little bit better compatible but let's see how well this actually looks like under the microscope as well so let me again try to push it down a little bit here just to make sure there might still be a few bubbles around here but let's see how this works okay Let capillary action do the work again, so it will spread under the cover glass on its own. Let's have a look. So this is still with the first one, and this one here is now the one using Uproll. Let me remove the arrow, close the condenser a little bit down with the light intensity, and let's refocus. I'm only using the low magnification because I do not want to make the mystic of touching the objective. Yeah? yeah, and you see that, yeah. There are far less or almost no air bubbles visible here. Yeah, because the mounting medium is able to reach um, all of the parts of the specimen yeah, because uh, the mounting medium is hydrophobic uh, and the specimen as well. Okay. 
So the question is, is now, why are the feathers covered in oil? What is the function of that oil? Well, the birds, what they do is, is uh, the, if you notice uh, when, that when it's raining or when birds are in the water, when they come out of the water, they're dry. The reason is, is the water does not want to touch the feathers because there is a very, very thin layer of, of oil, of fat on it. And as a matter of fact, when birds clean themselves, so to say, they will actually distribute oil and fat uh, over over its feathers, right? So this is actually yeah, very important. Yeah, exactly. There's a, a, a comment here um, uh, to repel water, right? So, and that is essentially, um, yeah, when I say oil, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about a very, very thin layer yeah, um, of fat that is on the feathers, right? And we can see that, uh, yeah, here the mounting medium is much better compatible with uh, the yeah, the feathers and therefore basically they do not stick together yeah so um yeah so i'm going to remove those again okay and i'm going to yeah i should have actually organized myself a little um, marker but i'm going to keep the i'm going to keep the sequence here and the next one is of course a nail polish i'm checking the time a little bit half an hour oh, we're, it's, it's fine okay because I do want to definitely uh, work a little bit with the pollen at the end. And the pollen is a challenge. So what you can do to reduce the shrinkage of the nail polish is, is, is to let it dry a little bit before you put the cover glass on top. Yeah? Because then it kind of, kind of pre-shrinks. Yeah? So is there something on here? So yes. Again, where is the feather? So I'm going to take again the up. Oh, you cannot see anything. Uh, I forgot. Here we go. Ha! Huh. Couldn't see anything. So uh, let me put the. F yeah. Up. Uh, yes. Here we go. Um, let me take this here. Yes, it's all properly submerged now. A cover glass goes on top. Ah, we wipe it again. And here we go. Usually what I do, you've probably noticed that I dropped it flat directly on the mounting medium because I've seen you normally uh, you're supposed to kind of lower it from the side. Yeah. And, and uh, but sometimes what happens then is, is that the specimen also gets pushed out. Uh, so, uh, but I'm therefore up. <laughs> what I'm therefore doing is I'm just going to drop it directly on top, okay, and then allow to allow it to spread. This one actually doesn't spread properly. Maybe this was already a little bit too. Ah, now it goes. Here we go. Uh, let's help it a little bit by tapping it. Okay. So let's have a look at this scope, scope view. That is the nail polish. And you see the hydrophobic nail polish also produces pretty nice results. Okay. Yeah, and the bubbles, of course, are moving around. Yeah, because it's still liquid. And last but not least, of course, I would like to try now the Upro mounting medium. Yeah, but otherwise you see there are not, you know, here is one, a small one, but otherwise you see that uh, essentially the feathers are quite um, yeah, free of, of bubbles. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's uh, put this away and now again to the UK mounting medium. I think I've never really tested it that systematically before. <laughs> So let's try the U-Kit mounting medium here. And one, two, Up. this was not a good, this was not a smart idea. If we got now some of this stuff on my 
on the surface here. So let's clear it away. Good. So we are now going to put again a feather piece. Uh, okay. Uh, it got stuck to the. It got stuck to the. <laughs> So here we go. Is it in there or did I accidentally remove it? No, it's in there. So let's uh, now again add a cover glass. And here we go. And again, it goes under the microscope. This actually also looks quite nice. Okay. You can see that, yeah, again, pretty much all of the, here there's some bubbles that are trying to escape, but essentially there are no big air bubbles uh, directly around the feather like we had the case with the water-based mounting medium. So, okay, so uh, this basically means uh, that these uh, spe uh, specimens are now going to dry horizontally until next week, but I would like to now try the, the pollen, okay? And, um, but before I do that, uh, then I will, um, I'm just going to read here a little bit. Hi, so you never ever push in the cover glass a bit to clean up the medium because you would have a mess, right? Um, I think what you're talking about is, is if I push uh, the, the cover glass, then I essentially have the, the, the medium squeezing out on the side. Um, and usually if this can happen, and usually what I do then is I simply let it dry and, and that's going to be fine. Huh? Um, but um, sometimes if you use very, it depends on the thickness of the specimen. If the specimen is thin, um, then uh, basically the capillary action, it will do everything and it will simply make a very thin and even film of, 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 of the mounting medium and there's no need to push it. Yeah. So, hmm, Upril is um, $68 for 25 milliliters in Australia. Yeah, it is um, not so cheap, yeah. But then uh, on the other hand, um, it does last a long time, yeah. So, um, so that is uh, basically the the thing here. And um, yeah, it, that's a little bit unfortunate that sometimes those uh, those uh, specific chemicals that you're using and so on that they are kind of uh, are quite uh, quite expensive. So what I would like to do now is is uh, I'm going to now use a uh, UP let me put the everything again into correct sequence. I would now like to mount just for my own fun a little bit. Um, I would like to mount this I don't know what it, I don't even know what insect this is a tiny fly I don't know and I'm just going to um, yeah take it out and I'm going to mount it here um, on my uh, on here just a second let me wipe this here again. And uh, I'm going to mount it in Uproll. So it is possible to actually transfer uh, small insects directly from alcohol into Uproll. Uproll is able to handle a little bit of alcohol. Um, it shouldn't, uh, there should not be too much water in there, but Uproll is, is fairly tolerant. Other mounting media, for example, like nail polish and U kit, um, if you have a little bit of water in there, you're going to see clouding happening immediately. Yeah? So that's not so, so nice and uh, the quality really goes down very fast. Yeah? So you have uh, basically water bubbles forming and uh, that's not so, so cool. So I'm just going to take it using the tweezers here. And this is probably going to completely destroy the specimen. Yeah? Um, this is, I don't even see this properly. So this is going to be... Yeah, a very <laughs> experimental. <laughs> yeah. But I think it is completely surrounded. If not, uh, there's a, a little part is, is, you know, you can always um, add a small drop also on top of it, just to make sure that it's completely covered. And the idea is here is to kind of experiment around um, if over the course of one week, if this insect starts to clear up and become brighter. Okay, so let's have a look now under the microscope again. Uh, 
Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, and of course, not properly arranged or anything. This is pretty. Yeah. yeah. Ah yeah, Th those those club sh uh, shaped organs that you see over here are the so-called the hal tears, um, as they're called. Yeah, do you see those here? Yeah. Uh, basically, that's uh, the reduced second pair of wings. Norm insects, um, many insects have two pair of wings. And flies only have one pair of wings. And insect, instead of the second pair of wings, they have those club-shaped uh, shaped organs that are also vibrating and swinging around. And this is used also for balance and for steering. Yeah? These are called the halteres. Yeah? yeah, just 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 saying. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it's of course not a not a nice specimen. Obviously, um, totally uh, distorted and everything. And the wings are not properly arranged. There is some dust. Look, there's some dust fibers here. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. The point of why I'm actually why I've made this here is is simply because I would like to uh, check um, how much the mounting medium is able to uh, brighten up the specimen over the course of a week. Yeah. So this is a little bit the the. Uh, the the purpose of this little experiment now okay so let me put this away then again and now let's uh, have a look at the pollen okay so let me put this also over here because the pollen that is a, a somewhat a bit of a, of a bigger challenge because pollen are quite sensitive um, you see the pollen depends on the pollen of course but pollen are able to absorb water and they're able to dry out and depending on the, whether they're able to absorb water or not they kind of start swelling or shrinking yeah so um yeah and uh, that's essentially the yeah thing that i would like to to show uh, now here as well ah somebody commented this is amazing we're 50 people here and pretty much uh, from every continent <laughs> yes <laughs> that's uh, that's also one of the things that i kind of like uh, it's one of the things that motivates me, me a little bit uh, all around the world and we're all kind of sharing the same uh, sharing the same hobby now oh, that's the wrong uh, thing here okay this was the wrong so square scope um, here we go and uh, let me quickly see um, what am I gonna do where's the pollen here is the pollen so let's uh, tr start doing this um, as well with the pollen so um, I'm going to start again with the water-based mounting medium So here we go. It's Elmus PVA and ah, you didn't see this. Okay, here we go. And now the question is, is how am I going to transfer some of the pollen into this mounting medium? And um, yeah, there are different ways how you could do that. But look, uh, one way that I found quite useful is you just dip tip of the um, yeah, toothpick in here. You collect some of the pollen this way. Yeah, and you kind of yeah go back in here. Yeah, and you've got a few pollen in here right now. Yeah. It's not really a lot. It doesn't have to be a lot. Okay, so that's number one. And uh, let's now do the following. Let's add a cover glass. And so, up, ah, I dropped it the wrong way. Oh, not good. Let's, let's try it anyway. Here we go. Just, okay, let's have a look. Lots of air bubbles, yeah. but this is how they look like. Okay, let's go up a little bit with the magnification. Yeah, this is how they look like. Maybe um, I'm going to remove the polarization here that's in bright field. Okay. Yeah, I've, uh, by the way, um, what I tried to do in springtime, um, I tried to do a little bit of a pollen germination. It was not entirely successful, but if you're adding a little bit sugar, then what you can do is, is you can actually start to see the pollen tube growing. So this is uh, now the one that uses the water-based mounting medium. So let's uh, try now Uperol. And um, usually what we're able to see, or I, at least I was able to observe this, that with some mounting media, what they actually do is, is they will actually remove the pigment uh, from, from the pollen, which is not a good thing. 
that it happens, but then it basically it means that it was able to dissolve some of the, uh, yeah, some of the pigments that uh, yeah are there. So that's now the upral mounting medium. And uh, again, I'm going to yeah, yeah, dip it in here, collect a few pollen. And uh, cover glass goes on top. Up, oh, the cover glass broke. Let's put it away. I'm just wiping it again. And uh, so this is uh, specimen number two. Let's put it back on the microscope. I need to change the scope view, and this is how it looks like. Yeah, in Upral. And there are, ah, look, there's some other things here as well. Yeah, of course, there's still it's still floating because the capillary action um, causes uh, the mounting medium to to spread. Yep. So here we go. Is Upral oil based? It is not oil. It's well, it's hydrophobic. Um, it's a little bit hydrophobic, but it is not uh, based entirely on oil. Uh, there is um, yeah, a, a solvent called Upral Essence, um, but um, Upral is actually a natural, it's a, it's a natural resin that uh, they isolated uh, from somewhere. Um, so it does uh, uh, smell a little bit like, like, uh, like wood, like the, like the, the resin of wood. Okay, um, yeah, so this is, yeah. So, and we're going to see uh, then uh, hopefully uh, by next week if uh, you know, the shape of, of those pollen grains has, has changed or not. Yeah. So, let's do the following. Let's now move on again to the next one. So, uh, this one, I always have to keep the, the proper uh, sequence here, otherwise I uh, forget what is what when I label it. And uh, then I'm going to, of course, try those yeah with the slide ringing table as well so this is now clear nail polish so here we go i think i do need another toothpick So, and up, up, here we go. And so I'm going to press down a little bit on this here. Uh huh. There seems to be a little bit something uh, thicker in here. Yeah. So maybe a small, I don't know something solid in here. Um, so I'm not able to make it entirely flat, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to try it anyway. There seems to be something kind of blocking uh, yeah, the cover glass. And uh, here we go. And I think you already do notice that they look significantly brighter. Okay. So that is now nail polish. Uh -huh. So let's go down a little bit with the magnification here. Okay. Okay. So it's still uh, moving around due to the spreading of the um, the spreading of the, the the mounting medium. And then last but not least, I would like to try U U kit as well. And then um, I'm going to try the glycerol, the glycerin mounting. And here I'm going to desk view. I'm going to take this one over here. This one is was for you kid, I think. And let's try this. Oh yeah. OK. 
Okay. Ah, it's sticking. Ooh, too much, too much, too much. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, and uh, I quickly close it again because the solvent you should not inhale. So here we go. This is quite a lot. And uh, I just put it into the trash can somewhere. And again, a cover glass. And we put this on top. And again, we have a look under the microscope. And this is how this one looks like. Okay. Looks much more, they look much more transparent. Yeah, the, other, the others that I tried were quite dark, yeah? but depending on how well they interact. Yeah? But you might also see something else happening a little bit. Uh, if, let's go up here. Is, um, sometimes they do change their shape a little bit. They start shrinking yeah? and uh, yeah, shriveling up. So not, yeah, sometimes you might be able to observe this as well. Yeah. Depends a little bit on, on um, how the mounting medium reacts uh, with the, the moisture um, in yeah, the, or the, the rest of the moisture that can be found in the, in the specimen. Yeah. Some mounting media really pull out the remaining water and then you can actually see that the specimen starts to shrink and shrivel. Hmm. Yeah, so let's do the following let's uh go yeah so that's how it looks like i'm just going to read a little bit here um again yeah some people are wishing merry christmas of course uh, as well um so yeah uh, i wish uh we could make an annual portfolio with all of the interesting things you're showing to us i don't know that it sounds but i think it's not the only yeah uh, it's like 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 uh that that would be an interesting thing like uh, maybe uh, a a summary video with uh, with a short uh, short summary of all of the things that i've showed you yeah okay so yeah so i've uh, now basically um prepared for those of you just uh, joined in um i prepared now essentially using four different mounting media i've prepared now the, the yeah the basically peanut uh, yeah the so-called the seed coat of peanuts um, to see how well it actually the mounting medium reacts uh, with the, the seed coat to make it more transparent. Then I also looked at a, a, yeah, a bird's feather and also last but not least uh, the, the pollen. But the pollen I would like to also now try to mount in pure glycerin. And uh, this is uh, actually something that I did not practice to do before and so it's going to be a little bit new for me as well. But what I want to do is, is I want to actually, let's use here, I've prepared some of those slides. And what I've done is uh, using a slide ringing table, I made a um, ring using nail polish. And what I would like to do is I would like to take a little bit of the pollen, mix it with a very small drop of glycerin and then place a cover glass on top. And the ring is there to hold a little bit of a distance uh, so that the, um, the glycerol does not uh, um, uh, spread all the way to the, to the side. Yeah? So and I always, also will use this here as, as for, sealing, um, for sealing the cover glass. So um, I'm going to try this. Um, yeah? I don't know how well this actually works, but uh, that's why we're here to learn. Um, and um, what I'm going to do first is, is I'm going to first take a little bit of the, um, um, yeah, of the glycerin that I have. Oh, I dropped it. This one over here. I'm going to take a little bit of the glycerin that I have, and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the um, um, of the po of the pollen. And I'm going to use my pipette here, and I'm going to use a very small amount. I don't know, maybe 10 microliters. I don't know. I'm just going to use 10 microliters and I'm going to place a small drop. It's a little bit, uh, I think it's too bit too much. 10 microns, microliters is too much. I'm going to go down to five. Okay, five microliters. And uh, because I do not want the drop to spread all the way, yeah? So um, now some pollen. I'm going to just use the tip here again. 
hoping that some of the pollen will go off. I cannot see anything. Yeah, I think there are a few pollen grains in here. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know hmm, if it's too thin or not. And what I will now try to do is the following. Hmm, maybe maybe a little more, maybe a little more glycerin. That's uh, yeah, because I do want it, want it to touch the cover glass as well. Okay, let's try it like this. Okay. Um, hmm, now what? Okay, uh, now I would like uh, the if I put a cover glass on top, then it will not stick uh, to the blue ring because um, it's already dry. So what I will do carefully is I, I would like to reapply um, a little bit of the nail polish. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to refocus this. So this is my slide ringing table. I have to recenter everything here again. Well, completely center everything. And here as well. Okay, uh, it's not perfectly in the center. And I'm going to uh, apply a small amount of, of nail polish again here on the side so that I'm able to glue the, uh, the cover glass on top. And then we're going to see how this works. Okay, and this is basically um, a, um, a kind of a, a permanent slide using a liquid mounting medium. That's a, a rare type of, 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 of slide, so to say. Normally slides have mounting media that turn solid or semi-solid like in glycerin gelatin, but this one here remains uh, completely liquid. Um, yeah, and uh, we're gonna try this. So I'm going to, uh, it's not entirely centered. That is now works. So I'm just going to apply a little bit here to, to simply make the, the cover glass stick. So, and before it actually starts to dry, I'm going to try the following. Let's see if this actually works. Boom. Okay. And I'm going to press down a little bit. And what you can, what I will do later again is, is to completely seal it off. Um, I'm going to, you can also apply another um, layer of, of nail polish um, from the cover glass down to the slide then it will completely seal it off, okay? But something that you cannot see properly, but I can, is, is that, yeah, it kind of almost filled out the glycerin, almost filled out uh, everything, yeah? So maybe it was a little too much in any case, but let's, uh, let's have a look, okay? Let's have a look under the microscope and uh, how the glycerin specimen looks like. And this is how it looks like. Okay, a couple of air bubbles again, but also very bright. And yeah, this is basically how it looks like. Okay, maybe I should um, open up it a little bit more to, to give it a little more brightness. You can change a little bit. Yeah. This is, by the way, also a way how you can uh, um, make sand slides. You can uh, make these uh, spacers. I've also tried to make spacer rings. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so this is, uh, I'll try another one just for the fun of it, okay? And uh, I'll put this on the side here. And uh, I'll try I've uh, prepared three slides. Okay, you know what? I'll put it put it directly on here. Um, okay, center everything. Yeah, it's kind of okay. Okay, that seems. You know what? Um, just for 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 illustration purposes, um, I'm going to make a dry mounted slide. Why not? Dry mounted means no mounting medium at all. Okay, so no, not even glycerin. Uh, I'm just going to put it on here. Uh, so the mounting medium, so it's surrounded by air. Okay, and this will then again look a little bit different. So I will have to take uh, a pipette tip and uh, somehow, hmm, how am I going to do that? Yeah, static electricity does help. And here there is a little bit of this. Yeah, hmm on here 
So I got some pollen already on here. Um, I'm going to again uh, put some of the nail polish on the side here. And uh, let's put then a cover glass again on top. And this should actually look significantly different from, so I have to find the center here. Let's press down on it a little bit. Yep, made contact. So, and this here is now um, a so-called a dry mounted slide, okay? Um, and uh, let's have a look how, uh, how it looks like when you, um, when the specimen is surrounded by air. It looks like this, again different. Yeah. Yeah. You see that it's kind of blurry. The reason being that um, yeah, there is a, it goes a, a little bit vertical, they're still clumped together. And uh, if you actually put it into a mounting medium like I've done before, then this breaks apart the clusters much better. Yeah. So you see that uh, the mounting medium also has um, other effects. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe we've got a little bit of, uh, what is this, some contaminant on the slide. Yeah? So that is uh, basically now a, a, a so-called a dry mounted slide. Yeah? So uh, there are a couple of questions again that I would like to address here. Um, I'm going to quickly scan down. I'm, I'm not in the center of the picture, I just realized. Okay. Uh, how do you best clean your drop measuring instrument? Some asked what solvent to use for Upro, please. Uh, how do you clean your drop measuring instrument? I don't know. Do you mean this one over here? Or you mean the microliter pipette? This is, um, I don't know if this is, um, yeah, uh, the one that you're referring to. Uh, I, I assume um, I don't clean it at all. Um, the uh, These microliter pipettes, uh, they work like this, that uh, essentially they have uh, two buttons to press. Uh, this is for taking up and uh, releasing the, the, the liquid. And this button over here, when you press it, look what happens, you're able to throw off the tip and it's uh, you throw it away, you know, so you don't clean it. And if you wanna use a new tip, you know, here are many of them. Uh, okay, just go in like this, and then you've got a new clean tip. So essentially they are disposable and uh, that's why I have um, over here, not visible for you, yeah, a little trash can where you can trash them, yeah. I know, I know, plastic waste, <laughs> yeah. So that is number one. And number two, um, there was a question, what solvent do I use for Upril? There is um, uh, basically what I use is, um, I use, uh, if the Upril becomes too hard and uh, too solid, uh, then you can uh, um, add a little bit of a, a solvent called Upril Essence, it's called. Sometimes it's also sold with a Upril. Um, however, I've added some regular alcohol. This also works. Okay, and not not the it's not the official way how you dilute a upril, but actually I found alcohol also to work. And as a matter of fact, I've diluted it with uh, concentrated alcohol, and uh, no problems so far. Okay, so um, so just a second, I'm going to. Uh, what are spacer rings is the question. So um, basically those um, the rings that I've made here, I've made using uh, the nail polish and these are, I call them spacer rings. However, what you can also try to do is, and some people have done that, they try to cut out those rings using, I don't know, plastic for example, or, or paper. I, I tried cardboard, but I was not so successful with cardboard because it was very, it, it, it absorbed all, all of the, the mounting medium too much and it did not stick well. Um, why would you need space rings, especially for thick specimens? So for example, if you would like to observe uh, sand grains um, yeah, or certain insects that are very thick and uh, you do not want to crush them too much, then sometimes you can use those space rings or um, sometimes even for temporary mounts. For example, if you would like to include some, some water fleas and, and if you do not have those space rings, then the water fleas are gonna be crushed by the cover glass and you don't want that. 
Yeah. At the same time, you do not want, you have to put it, or you should put a cover glass on top to prevent the movement of the, of the water fleas. But if you do not have those rings, then it's going to crush uh, crush them so um, they can be quite uh, quite useful um, occasionally um, if you do not want to make those space rings there is a work around that I also can show you um, which I sometimes also have used I need to I for, where did I put it ah here what you can do as well is is you take a um, yeah a slide and you take three cover glasses yeah, so you put one here you put one over here then you put the specimen in between, like your water flea or, or um, whatever. And then you put basically like a bridge, you put the third cover glass across. Yeah? So you basically have the cover glasses lifting up uh, the specimen a little bit. So that's, um, that's uh, uh, what I usually do uh, because it's simply much faster. Yeah? So um, that is uh, yeah, um, some, uh, a trick a little bit to prevent uh, the cover glass from compressing the specimen too much if this is um, a problem. Yeah? Um, so I skip down again a little bit, but I think there are not so many more questions. Uh, good spacer rings are uh, Passscheiben, available at Amazon in several thicknesses. Passscheiben, thank you for the uh, comment. I did not know about that. Okay, so um, yeah. So I didn't, didn't know about that. Yeah. So um, what else uh, do we have? Um, yeah, I do have one more left here. Um, hmm. I'm thinking um, may maybe I'm just going to make another glycerol mount. Yeah. Um, space. Yes. Oh, that's a, that's a point. Um, I did try that. I don't have them here. I did also 3D print some space rings as well. Yeah. So that's also possible. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, but again, not everyone has a 3D printer. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do now the following. I'm going to simply try it again with uh, a little bit of, of uh, yeah, um, glycerin, and this time very little. So you see, it, it, the, 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 the pawn is very sticky. Pawn is very sticky. Yeah. I don't know if it's static electricity or, yeah, or not. So, and I'm going to now add a little bit of, of glycerin again. A small amount. I'm just going to use the tip also to break apart the clusters a little bit. Yeah, but I just realized now everything is, is on the pipette. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything on here. Wow, isn't this interesting? Everything that I had on here so I'm going to add more so I think now I've got a few let me check yes now I've got a few so and uh, yeah I have to prepare this here put this here and so up and uh, what I would like to do in springtime, um, I would like to collect several pollen samples and I would like to mount them permanently in uh, glycerin gelatin. That is the, um, yeah, the standard preferred mounting medium for pollen because it does not change the shape of the pollen too much. So again, I'm going to add a little bit of, yeah nail polish here on the side to make it a little bit sticky hoping that the space ring has the correct size and here we go okay, difficult to see up okay yes And yep, and now the uh, you might be able to see it. I don't know if you the glycerin uh, does not reach uh, the side, but actually there's a droplet in the middle. Scope view, it's the one. Yeah, that's the one in air, and that is the one in glycerin. Okay, 
Uh, let me see, this one is actually the, the correct one. Let me see. What I could do now is I could actually go up a little bit here. Let's go like this. Yeah. So yeah, there's still a little bit of few air bubbles in here, but that's good. That's fine. So, um, yeah, how does static electricity make them stick together? Um, I, it, it was just a guess that it's static electricity. Yeah, um, yeah. If there are uh, basically, if you um, well, actually, or you, or repel each other, I don't know. Yeah, but it, this could be a, this could be a, yeah a thing that uh, sometimes if you rub uh, two objects together then um, essentially it causes sometimes uh, for example dust to stick uh, together and so on so on. this was uh, simply a speculation from my side yeah? um, how is glycerin gelatin different from glycerin well um, it's like this that in glycerin, glycerin gelatin or glycerol jelly um, is a mounting medium that um, you have to, uh, which turns semi-solid um, the problem with those slides here that I have is, is that um, if you store them vertically, then actually the glycerol is might actually run down, okay? And it's uh, the the pollen are not locked into place. Yeah, it's liquid. Yeah, and sometimes this is what you want. Yeah, but uh, the problem is, of course, that it's not very stable. And if you really want to have a stable specimen, then the mounting medium should solidify. And in glycerin gelatin, uh, you, um, you, there is glycerin in there. Um, there is um, also gelatin in there. And the mounting medium will become a little bit hard. I say a little bit because it will become uh, not completely hard, like, uh, like, for example, like nail polish or so. This becomes completely hard. But it will stay in a very thick uh, uh, gel-like uh, uh, consistency. And um, in order to prevent the mounting medium from turning bad, glycerin gelatin also contains a, a, a small disinfectant um, to prevent the growth of bacteria. Um, and uh, what you have to do is after you mounted it with glycerin gelatin, you also have to ring the slide uh, to prevent uh, too much drying out uh, um, 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 of, of the specimen. Yeah, so, but it is actually glycerin gelatin. There are different recipes and the one according to, to there's a glycerol gelatin according to Kaiser and there's a glycerol gelatin according to Kissa, um, two people who have different recipes for that. And the one that you use for mounting pollen is the glycerol gelatin according to Kissa. That's somehow the standard um, because this does not uh, change the shape of the pollen too much. Yeah. So this is a little bit the, the, the a little bit of background information. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a question here. I've had a long period of absence from this channel. What microscope setup is that? Well, I've got my, um, yeah, it's my Olympus microscope that I have. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, and with an extra camera separated here so that you can actually see also the magnification that I'm using. And yeah, so that is again the air. You see, not, not so much to see. The mounting medium actually does improve the, the, the contrast uh, and the clarity significantly. Okay, so let's put those away as well so that I can store them until next week. Okay, because I would like to look at them um, again. Okay, so and last but not least, uh, for some of you who don't know how I made those spacer rings, I did make some videos already before, but simply for the sake of completion, I just wanted to show you. Um, and, uh, how I'm making those spacer rings. By the way, those slide ringing tables you can also easily make yourself. Yeah, okay, and so everything's properly centered. Yeah. There is, a, yeah, I just showed to you how it looks like this. There's an armrest over here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you can also try to make them yourself. And um, what I've done is I've added a little bit of acetone to the nail polish to make it sufficiently liquid. Okay, and uh, essentially all I do is I give it a little spin. Yeah, and uh, I place a ring on here. Yeah, it's already quite dry. Yeah. Um, it's, it's too way too dry. But then I usually allow it to, to turn hard a little bit, to dry a little bit, and then I add a second layer um, until um, I have got the desired thickness. Yeah, you see this, uh, this, is, this is what you call a demonstration effect. <laughs> it's uh, pretty bad, okay? Uh, yeah, but essentially, that's uh, what I'm doing. Uh, is is I kind of build up layer by layer by layer um, until I have the the required thickness. Yeah. 
so that's a little bit the way that I'm yeah I've made those uh, those slides yeah so um, yeah Canada balsam works well too Canada balsam uh, yes is a very uh, or was a very popular uh, mounting medium and still is um, however Canada balsam really requires the specimen to be completely dehydrated so you have to make sure it's completely free of water you have to place the specimen in a solvent called xylene at the end um, but Canada balsam to my knowledge has extremely long-term durability yeah so um, yeah so there's slides that are properly prepared in Canada balsam apparently they almost last and almost last forever yeah? if properly prepared but uh, they have to be completely free of uh, completely free of water okay so um, I hope I did not uh, skip any any questions here um, yeah what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to take all of those slides that I've made I've got how many four times 12 slides 12 um, 13 14 I've made 15 slides and I'm going to store them horizontally now and uh, I'm going to uh, basically wait until everything completely dries up um, before I uh, I was wondering which microscope model it's an Olympus microscope uh, that I have yeah and uh, before I um, yeah basically um, say goodbye and Merry Christmas I want to show you this one slide here which I made I think two or three weeks ago together with you some of you might remember this is the cross section of a plant stem which I stained in which I stained in um, in with methylene blue and it's too bright okay and uh, over here uh, it's not so just a second you know what I'm gonna take away the so here we go yeah and uh, I mounted this in I mounted this um, in in uh, PVA glue, and um, yeah, you see that it's still there. There are some air bubbles. And how can you remove those air bubbles? Um, maybe a vacuum chamber. Okay, I should have, uh, or degassing of the mounting medium also is uh, is uh, recommended. Unfortunately, I don't have a a vacuum chamber. <coughs> Excuse me, but that is actually something that uh, would be quite beneficial to re uh, reduce the. The number of bubbles but the important thing is if you go all the way to the side of the cover of, of the cover glass where is it here yeah you see something very notable you see that a little bit of mounting medium has spilled out and that is fine okay so that is uh, basically the the edge of the cover glass okay and there's a little bit of mounting medium that has spilled out um, and it did not shrink because uh, what will happen, for example, with the nail polishes is that, that there will be bubbles forming I inwards. Okay, as the nail polish shrinks, it starts to draw in some air. But you see, the PVA glue didn't do that, so that's why I kind of like it a lot. That uh, yeah, um, essentially, yeah, it does not cause any um, any any deformations, uh, so to say. Yeah, and you see, there's a little bit of glue that has spilled out here at the edge of the cover glass. Yeah. And uh, usually what we see is, is with some mounting medium, especially nail polish, that there are some, you know, it starts to shrink so much that actually air bubbles are pulled in from, from the side. Yeah? But this one here, it does not show that. Yeah? Just wanted to, to, to comment on this a little bit. Yeah, um, um, yeah so uh, what I'm going to, another thing, just the very few last questions, okay? Uh, can we use UV cured resin as a mounting media? As a matter of fact, yes, it depends on the resin. Uh, there are indeed mounting media available that um, essentially can be cured with UV light. I've uh, experimentally tested some of those. And there is also something I've not tried, but it's on my agenda. There is nail polish out there that can be cured by UV light. That might be quite interesting as well. Okay, there is a nail, so clear nail, nail polish that can be cured with you. Ultraviolet light is something that I'm going to have a look um, as well. Okay, so yeah, so this is uh, this is something that um, yeah, um, that I would simply wanted to, to share with you. Okay, people, um, you know what? It's over an hour already, one hour 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to simply wish you a Merry Christmas now. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll see if I have time again next week, and then I'll be uh, joining uh, you in here again for next week. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, last, what does cured by UV light mean? Okay, last question. <laughs> this basically means that the mounting medium is liquid, 
You just prepare it just like I've done now. You drop a cover glass on top, but then you have to use an ultraviolet light flashlight and you have to shine it on the specimen for one minute. And this will make it hard. So it's not by the evaporation of a solvent that will turn it hard, but it's the light, the ultraviolet light, the UV light that will actually make the, the, the mounting medium hard. And there are some nail polishes uh, around there that actually you know, some women put it on there and then they have this device that they put their fingers in and then they're being, yeah, they put ultraviolet light is going to shine on their fingers. Um, and I was told it's not strong enough to cause a sunburn because it, otherwise it, that would be pretty bad, obviously. Um, but this ultraviolet light will actually make the, the, the nail polish solid. Um, and that would be also quite an interesting thing uh, yeah, uh, to, to experiment. So I'm going to now, uh, really, I'm going to call it quits uh, for the day. Um, I wish you all a happy holidays uh, um, around the world. Um, I hope to see you again uh, next week. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best and uh, see you around. Bye-bye. All the best.